Hey everyone, welcome to Head, Heart, and Hustle, the podcast that gives you insights from real working creatives. I'm Alan Plummer, as always. I'm your host, and uh, thanks for listening. So anyone with a side hustle or creative outlet can feel isolated from their friends, their family, and others around them who just don't get their passion. That's why Head, Heart, and Hustle exists, to help you feel motivated, learn, and just get a nice pick-me-up of creative energy from other people like yourself. Every episode, I interview a creative individual who doesn't just pretend to be creative. They've rolled up their sleeves and are producing great things because they need to. They know that being creative is part of who they are. Does that sound familiar? Awesome, you're in the right place. Now, today we have a great interview with a colleague of mine, uh, Meg Shear. Meg is a designer by trade, we work together, but she is also a very talented illustrator in her own right. Meg, in fact, did the logo for the podcast. If you're uh, listening to this podcast right now on a phone, you probably have seen the Bleeding Heart logo with the uh, paintbrush and the pen kind of punctured into that. Meg was kind enough to design that for me and draw that. So you're already familiar with her work, whether you realize it or not. And so Meg was an obvious choice to sit down and interview when we spoke. She's done a number of creative things in her life. She's always dabbled in painting. She's always been a huge illustrator. She has her own work that's for sale online through places like Society6. And she had some really good advice for me as the parent of a young child who seems to have some creative tendencies as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy this and let's take a listen. Meg, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. All How right. are you? Good, good. I'm well. And we'll say that we are um, hunkering down in a conference room at work to try to <laughs> get this knocked out <laughs> after, our, after our first round with some uh, technical difficulties. We'll try this again. We'll try not to rehash everything to the point that it's boring. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so as you know from some of the other interviews I've done, uh, we ask people to start by introducing themselves and talking a little bit about who they are and what they do. So why don't we start there? Um, my name is Meg Shearer. And I am an in-house graphic designer for a big company. And in my spare time, I love to illustrate anything. Anything. I just love to draw. Including yeah. the logo. Well, I did do Including that in my logo. spare time. There you go. Yes, that I did not do that on company time. <laughs> you should hope not. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. Um, I might have mentioned this to you before. We've gotten a lot of nice feedback and compliments on the logo so i know it's been really well received it's been really really nice um so you so talk to me a little bit about how you kind of juggle the two and kind of what your process is like because we've talked about this before it's kind of tough to right especially as as a working creative to come to work do design work here and then to go home and do your own projects. That's what is that it, what is that like for you? It's a switch that you have to that you have to have, an internal switch. Right. It is hard if especially if we're really busy here and doing creative things. Like not everything in an in house design department is creative. Sometimes it's papers and right. you know, letters right. and, and things like that. But if if we're doing a project or a campaign or working on tweets and we're being creative and then I go home I it's hard some days to get back into creative but not corporate right like the other creative the other true creative <laughs> yeah. stuff now you said it's a, it's a switch that you flip right is it's not that easy though is no it? it's and some days it depends like on on a monday right it's a lot less likely to happen <laughs> than say on a thursday or friday on a friday but i would think uh, for me by a friday i'm tapped out though are you uh no fridays give me energy Fridays are because you look forward to the weekend because Friday is I've got the whole weekend and (laughs) and the world is my oyster and I can create from sun up to sundown and beyond you know and is that is is that what happens is that what happens never (laughs) never (laughs) it's not like crack up with a bottle of wine go home and sit and five hours no and and by the way no no wine I cannot I cannot have a drink and I do anything oh that's that's legit that's serious yeah no it's it's coffee Right, right. It's a lot of coffee and, yeah, so me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's because if I have a, if I have even just one glass of wine, then I'm all relaxed and that's yeah, so and that's no. just not good. No, well, that's that's okay. There's calories in that. I don't need it. That's right. It's all good. <laughs> so yeah, so Friday is my favorite day because that's there's so much hope. 
Yeah. The world is full the of possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's all, it is. That is. <laughs> now we've talked a little bit about your your process. Your process has evolved a little bit. Um, so you, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what you create and, and kind of how you create it because I want to get into some of the things that you've experimented with and how that process has evolved in the past couple of years. Yeah. I well, I love pen and ink. I have a rapidograph pens, a right. couple of them, right. and I've had rapidograph pens since I was a, a little kid and my parents gave me some for Christmas I believe and that's what I like to draw with so okay. I've been drawing with rapidograph pens my whole life I love the old Victorian etching style mm -hmm. the atmosphere of that kind of illustration right and so that's really where I keep landing back I've tried different styles and it's mm -hmm. not like it's not that i can't do them it's mm -hmm. just that that's, that's your not as rewarding to yeah. me when i'm done with the picture i don't feel like oh wow i love this i'm so proud of it it's so cool it's like oh that's nice that's yeah so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but when i'm doing stuff with pen and ink and then coloring it that i get s just wrapped up in it yep sucks me into its little world of lines and squiggles and dots right so you do you, you do the drawings in pen and ink and then those transition into larger pieces do you because you always hear about like how visual artists will sketch something out before they paint it or they'll do multiple sketches of the same thing and they'll tweak some of that actually um a friend of mine told me that she does her sketching kind of in Photoshop. Right. So she'll get an idea in her head. And so this is what I do now. Like I'll get an idea in my head mm -hmm. and then I'll take pictures. Right. And then I'll put the pictures together and make it into whatever it is that I, I think I want to mm -hmm. draw. Mm -hmm. And then I'll print that out and then I'll draw from that. Okay. And when yeah, you say pictures, they're actual photographs? So yeah, you take photographs. photographs. And do that? Um, okay. And I, I have a number of artist friends, photographer friends, mm -hmm. who um, have given me, like, gorgeous inspiration. Hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Very cool. Very cool. That's so th that network. Thing. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so you take some of that stuff, and, and when you put it into Photoshop, it's interesting because it's not, for me, it wouldn't necessarily be an obvious thing to go from right from hand to drawing to digital and then back for me there's always been this assumption that right when you're doing visual illustrations especially there's this kind of romanticized nuance of trial and error and experimentation and seeing where the drawing takes you and that whole process of refinement does yeah. this kind of does this alter that does it shortcut it what um, is that what is that i guess it shortcuts it the Usually the the image, the idea is in my head when I'm driving, fortunately, or trying to go to sleep yep. or in the shower or at the gym yep. or, yeah. When or your mind is not concentrated on it. Your subconscious a, kicks in out. In a meeting yeah. or something. <laughs> and then I get the idea. It's like a snapshot in my head. Okay. And I could go home and sketch and sketch and sketch and sketch until I get the snapshot right. But... By the time I get it right, historically, mm -hmm. when I do it that way, I'm bored of that, and I need a new idea. Mm, okay. Because I actually get bored of ideas pretty quickly. Yeah. I have okay. to strike while the iron's hot. Okay. So doing it this way, it's just a br it was a brilliant idea, and I'm, I'm so glad that she suggested it to me, because right. this, is, this works so much better than me getting bored. I, I don't know. And yeah. it's, it sounds like it's faster, too. It's, it's so much faster. Magical. Because yeah. then I just throw it together in Photoshop. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not using the Photoshop file. So, right. you know, it doesn't have to be exactly that. And there, there are other pictures that I've done, like, straight from photographs that people have given me permission to use where I, I'm not even doing anything. They had a beautiful photograph. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing what that image looks like as a drawing. So it can go both ways. But the ones that I that I have conceived in my head, those, it's so much easier to, to work from you have a my very little piece together collage than it is. And you have a very particular 
frame and you have, I mean, a, a mental image. I have an idea in my head. head. Yeah, you've heard me say this before. It's funny because I've talked about my son and my son being yeah. a visual artist and drawing. And one of my, I guess, faux pas, right, has been he draws. He's got an image or something that he's trying to draw. Mm -hmm. He gets very upset with himself and he's very hard on himself uh -huh. and loses it, just gets upset. And, oh, this is awful and I ruined it. And he gets very dramatic yeah. about it, right? He goes off, flies off the do. handle. I yeah. still do. Yeah. That, that. I, I guess that makes me feel better. Yeah, no. He's five, and I'm like, okay. Oh, but yeah. it's it's funny because I look at him, and I'm like, Marcus, it's okay, it's okay, and right. And you've heard me say this. I joke with him that I'm like, Marcus, there's no mistakes in art. Like it's it's okay. That's part of the process. Yes, there but are. Exactly. You've said to me that no, that's not yeah. correct. No, yes, there are because if it's not what I saw in my mind's eye, then I have failed. That's harsh. <laughs> it is. Dramatic. That's harsh. That's like harsh. Kids you don't ever cover. you don't ever yeah. step back and say, you know what? That's not 100% what I thought it was going to be. But that's pretty damn good. Like do you ever do you ever have those moments? Yeah. 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 It's it's I well, I'm not as dramatic about it as I was when I was 5. <laughs> right. So I although know although longer. as an artist, if anybody's in artists are entitled to kind of have that. If you're in your studio in your yeah, space, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, if I'm alone, but yeah. but my kids get a little upset if you know. I right. mean, even chairs breaking. Even now, they still pieces like, of wood snapping. Kid, rather, I wasn't having little hissy fits. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we're, have some dignity, Mike. And then, exactly. <laughs> Cut down on the caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Scale yeah, back yeah. the coffee. See? See? That wouldn't happen if I was drinking wine, would that's it? That's right. That's right. But that's because none of it would have happened if I was that's drinking right. wine. That's right. That's I'd right. I'd just be napping. You would have had one little... I'd be asleep. Like, oh, and then, yeah. yeah. Well, one little line moves, and you're like, okay, start yeah. over. No, I, I, there were piles of crinkled up pieces of paper and little hissy fits when I when I was growing up. This this whole this eliminates that. That's good. But no, I still I still will have I have things that I've started and I'm like, this this is garbage. This is not at all what I thought it was gonna be like in my head. Yeah. So I could stick with it and try and salvage it. Mm -hmm. But life is short. So I don't even do that anymore. It's like, you know what? So what? Throw it away. Right. Start over. Something right. new. Now the it's stuff you good. the stuff you do is really, especially now that you've explained your process, it makes perfect sense. It's really kind of photorealistic in a lot of ways, right? It's not as, versus kind of as abstract. Much so and, as you can be with pen and ink. Yeah, yes. exactly. For for illustrations, they I, I think they really absolutely are. Yeah. Versus kind of you know something more abstract or more nuanced. Have you always gravitated towards that? Is that something that's kind of come out over time i think there's a little ocd thing going on there okay yeah okay it, it seem to be it has to be exactly right um yeah proportionally in detail i would all that. love yeah. to be more free and i will try i'll experiment and get out the paint yeah and the pencils instead of the ink and I'll no no try. melting clocks no geometric shapes nothing uh, yeah no I will <laughs> I will try and I and I will never like what I've done so okay. far but I'm not giving up yeah I'll yeah keep yeah trying I think it'd be awesome to be loose and free and you know m more emotion and less whatever it is I do one of my favorites of yours and, and again we've talked about this before is the the pie, the American, I think you did the American, American pie. pie. I want to make sure I had the title right. That's because um, I love pie. That is that <laughs> one? I, I just pie. think it's this kind of neat commentary, and I just like the the colors and, again, the detail, and, yeah. and you've got those layers there. and just the, It just it just kind of works, and it's kind of this neat to me. It's I don't know. There's just something to well, that you. that I really kind of like, um, the idea of the layers and the different colors and the detail, but it's not – there's something about pie that's inherently messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's so, to me, it's nuanced, but it's a little bit different than most kind of, whether you would call it patriotic or not, most other kind yeah. of things that are meant to kind of pull up yeah. Americana aren't, yeah. aren't usually necessarily presented like that. No, and it it was not actually my intent to be patriotic. Um, oh, it's totally my interpretation of it. I totally get that. <laughs> no. But, well, no, not when I named it that. Yeah, I mean, 
no, it was not my intent. I just really like pie, and I love fruit, so fruit pie, and and there was like, well, I love cherry pie. What's better than one fruit? I love blueberry Multiple, pie. right. I love apple pie. I right. also love pumpkin pie, right. lemon meringue pie, but right. that wasn't going to go well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought, I need all the pies, but you can't do all the pies. Right. Well, I guess I could do like a lemon meringue and a pumpkin, but... It'd be kind of boring. It's just different colors yep. of the same texture. So the idea of the size, the playing with the size between the cherries and the blueberries and the apples, and it was just fun. And I thought, well, at this point, we've got red, white, and blue going on here. Right. So it is American pie. I'm halfway there. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's and, it. And so the 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 desire to eat pie came first. Yep. Followed by playing with berries. Followed by Americana. Yeah, so there it, you go. it evolved. And eventually you said, I'm not hungry. I don't want to draw this anymore. Yeah. No, I did. <laughs> I finished and then I wasn't. I, I was so over the pie that I yeah. saved some calories because I didn't have to eat it. I just. You just drew it. I lived it for a couple That's weeks. right. Yeah. That's it. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about your childhood for a minute. So you talked about getting those pens as a, as a kid and kind of starting to draw that way. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you were creative again, even at a young age, like you kind of found that aspect of yourself. Was it always drawing? Were there other kind of arts involved as a kid painting? Did you just remember kind of picking up crayons at an early age? Was there anything else? I think I was given crayons at a very early age. Mm-hmm. Um, I, this is not a, a pity thing. I didn't have a lot of toys. Got it. And maybe that made me. Yep. Um, it also made me completely go overboard and spoil my children because I didn't have the toys you didn't myself. Have However, not having those toys made me draw my worlds. I drew mm-hmm. my toys. I, mm-hmm. I had to live in my imagination. So right. maybe it made me psychotic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, just well, I mean, and no, yeah. and it's funny because even with Marcus, right? We, I mean, here we are heading up on Christmas, and mm-hmm. we ask Marcus what he wants for Christmas. It's not this big kind of overarching gift. Now, again, he's only five. Yeah. But, you know, you always expect kids to say, oh, I want this, or I want an Xbox, or I want that, or a big video yeah. game. System. He's asking for little, like, 10 and $15 toys. The most expensive thing he wants is going to be, like, 25 or 30 bucks, right? That's awesome. Which is awesome. So we're going to end up buying him tons more markers and tons of pencils and paper. Yeah. So I guess my, my, my counter to your point is, even when we could afford to buy him those kind of toys. And I don't want to spoil my son, but we probably do, right? Because yeah, we right. have that luxury, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even with that capability, he gravitates towards that stuff. I mean, I'm inclined, yeah. based on what I see with my son, you gravitate towards it regardless of anything else. Because we go up to his room and look at his toys, and I'm like, Dude, this is a, all this is a waste of money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and I love him, and he does play with it, but he forgets what he's got and other stuff, and yeah. he just that's what he wants, yeah. you know? That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that it's, I don't always know if it's an either or, just at some point you tap into that. Yeah, I don't know what would have happened if I'd had all of the, all of the toys that my friends had. Would I have been less creative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I drew and colored and it was constant. And then as I got older, I started experimenting with other things, Mm -hmm. like making things from like balsa wood and stuff, Uh, sewing, making stuff with fabric. But I always go back to drawing. I have little waves. I went through a felting phase this spring. Okay. It wasn't a total success. Right. It wasn't a total failure. But my, my bird looks more like a fish. (laughs) <laughs> and I can't quite get the arms right on the little figure I made. Okay. So, yeah, it's it was fun it's though. It was fun. Yeah. And it was I think it's almost like a, a palette cleanser. Like I need to do these these little crafty things. And then I can go back to drawing. It. Right, right. So you, it's like I still while I'm while I'm felting poking things with its needle repeatedly, <laughs> I can uh, Let's I can, read into that. Let's yeah, break that down. Yeah, as I'm stabbing <laughs> the felt the, the wool with the needle. Right, right. I can uh, I can um, think of it it does put ideas in my head. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I'm yeah. playing with colors. Colors my favorite thing i love colors okay so i'm playing with the colors as i'm doing that and that does kind of put little ideas in your head Mm -hmm. and you go off you know in in your mind maybe other people don't do that maybe that's just me but i go off and travel in my head 
I absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think you need breaks too, because there's always that there. I think there's this constant desire to be mm -hmm. creative, but then yeah. if you're creative in the same way constantly, there's this fatigue that comes from it. True. So right. it is. Yeah, it is nice to to break it up and do something else. And it's there's something so rewarding about creating something. Yeah. I just thought it would be wonderful to be able to make my own furniture. Oh yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? In I theory, build my own, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Until I, I actually sit build in, build my own house and make my yes. own furniture. And yes, I just think that would be so awesome. Yeah, it's daunting, but I really admire people that can do that. Well, so, all, I'm always fascinated by those TV shows of people that buy old furniture and refurbish it and yeah. fix it up and everything. It's just one, I don't have the time or the energy or the desire to do that. But it just, it's it's kind of like I, I think that would be a neat skill to have. Yeah. To be able to do a bunch I of I did that caning stuff. a couple times. What is that? Caning, you know those those chairs with the, the rush? Oh, the yeah. Caned chairs. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother taught me how to do it. Really? So I did cane. Okay. I caned one of my chairs, fixed it. Right. And then some bozo at work found out that I was doing caning and he right. got me to cane a chair for him. Oh, and I think he paid me $30. For like a week's worth of evening you got spent caning you got and, and blood is running down my <laughs> I was going to ask you if you like it your nails are shot and stripped. Your nails are fine, but your fingers are cut. You are cut up. bleeding. That's yeah. worth more than $30. It is nasty. Unless you did like, this in oh, like 1994, yeah. it's worth more. <laughs> you, well, it might have been around 1994. <laughs> it, it actually was probably around 1994, but... That's not the point. Even then, I could have charged $100 for that chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it was not as rewarding as I thought it was going to be. So okay. After doing my chair, I think I did something for my grandmother. And right. And this bozo's chair, I never... And I then never you were like, that's enough. I like that's my hands. That's it. I'm done with the <laughs> I want to be able to draw with my yeah, hands. Yeah, exactly. I'll never draw again if I keep caning. If I keep, yeah. The, I keep getting blood on the page. It's, right, yeah. right. <laughs> and I'm calloused and shot. Because there's a macabre <laughs> element to this that, <laughs> yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. I'm going to draw with red now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So red, you, black, and white. Yep. That's exactly that's right. It. That's exactly right. It's interesting. So you've experimented in these other kind of mediums and these other approaches. How did you find your voice as you were, were growing up? At what point did it become kind of drawing for drawing sake because it was enjoyable and it was your outlet to kind of saying, wow, this is what I want to do for a living or, or this creative, even if it's not illustration, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What was that progression for you getting to that point to say, okay, I want to make a living off my creativity? It it kind of almost didn't happen or still hasn't happened in a way. Well, you are I, a professional creative. You are paid I, to be creative. I, I am. hate to burst that bubble. I am. It may not feel like it. Okay. It didn't feel like it for me when I was getting paid to write for a living, but it is. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's and that's it. Yeah. That's that's basically it. Yeah. I I did want to be a children's book illustrator. I still the the dream is to someday be published. Yeah, that would be really nice. It'd be so cool to walk into a bookstore and see something that I did right. on a shelf. Yeah, and people are actually paying money. For right. That? What? Right. 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 Yeah, I just think that would be really cool. So the dream is still out there. Okay. Um, but I ended up. I went to art school for a little while and. Copped youthful attitude about being told what and how, and I'm yeah. like, you know what? This is all. That's your opinion, right? You know? how, yeah. who are you to say that this is a C? Right. I say it's an A, and I don't know. Looking back, maybe it was a C, maybe it was a B. Right. I don't know what it was, right. but. The end of the day, I was young and I was like, you know what? I don't need this nonsense. So I dropped out of school. So a year of art school, and then I said, that's I don't need to be told what to do by right. somebody who's teaching. I'm it. not paying for approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully, that's like yeah. you're not an artist. You're teaching. Yeah. So you know, don't. Yeah. <coughs> right. So anyway, I waitressed and worked in restaurants and stuff for a while. Ended up going back to school, but for English literature, right? Not writing. So I can't write. Yep. I can read, which is <laughs> good to just know. as important. Yeah, it's a good, just it's a as good important. Thing. That's right. I can I can probably write, but I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a writer. I have no interest in writing, but I, I still read a lot. And then 
kept on waitressing until my back was hurting and okay. it was sort of like, okay, it's time to stop waitressing and ended up in mutual funds because that's the day job I got. Because that's where you ended and up. And I got licensed and I became a licensed person who talks about mutual funds. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not very artsy, is it? It's not, but it's, <laughs> it's not it's the uh, art of talking about mutual funds. That's right. No. That's right. But health insurance is a good thing. <laughs> health insurance is a really good thing. It was it was nice to have a nine to five lifestyle so yep. that I was off when other people were off. So you can have actually a social life that mm -hmm. you know isn't at night. I I would actually be on the phones talking to people and drawing with my pen and my paper and at first my supervisor's like yeah no that's not a good that's idea. not okay no, that, we're too buttoned no. up we're too and I'm like, staunch yeah, for that right? yeah, this is, yeah this is a stodgy company right right, right. but uh, actually when you listen to my calls i i was more focused when i was drawing mm -hmm. than when i wasn't hmm. because the drawing i guess killed a lot of the other white noise going on I, probably add who knows <laughs> uh, but I am able to focus better if I'm doodling or something like that. So I was I was actually drawing, though. And they let me do it. So that kind of got me back into drawing again mm -hmm. after being out of it for a while. And I uh, did a children's book with, with a friend of mine, with my best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote it, and I illustrated it, and we hired an agent and everything. Yeah. Or got an agent, and you have to pay him, but you get what you pay for. So right, the book right. was never published. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome book. Never published. Children's book, you said. Children's book. Okay. Do moon jellyfish really live on the moon? That's cool. Yeah. It was wonderful. He, he wrote this wonderful poem, and I illustrated it right. painstakingly, and... That's it. So we're trying to All done. get out the door. That's All done. It's been a long time. Well, and the funny thing is, is like you and I and a lot of people have talked before about kind of technology and how it's kind of in many ways the great leveler for art, right? Mm -hmm. So we can talk in a minute about what you're doing with your art and stuff online now and how it's more mm -hmm. widely available. But for kids' books, that's a bit tough. Like most Beautiful. people, myself included, still want to buy paperback books like actual books to oh, read you to your little to. kids you can't snuggle you can't pull up, up a tablet bed at night with your kid no and read them a tablet right here's your kindle we're gonna That's read the book awful. yes and it's one of the few spots where you still kind of need that you traditional need that. Model. and they need to be able to turn the page yes. and, and yes. then go back and look again it's just swiping right. on it Whereas it if takes you were, all the heart out of it. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Whereas if you were writing young adult or fiction stories or anything else, you could publish it yourself and go on to Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. No, it has to be a pretty picture book. So. Yeah, which doesn't lend itself no, well to those it's... electronic pieces. So what would you say is the most rewarding creative piece that you've worked on? That I've ever done? What yeah. Do, what do I love best? Yeah, whether it feels like a success or been the most rewarding thing that you've done, what do you think that would be? There's a, there's a couple of things. The, the first one I did when I decided I was going to draw and go online, well, one of the first ones was a, is a London alley scene, and it's super atmospheric, and, you know, I was back living in Dickensian London as I drew yeah. it. That was really, I liked the atmosphere in that. There's a, a sunflower mm -hmm. that I was down in the weeds making those little curly. You don't know until you look up close in a photograph. Yeah. That detail in the middle of a sunflower is amazing. Hmm. So how to handle that, because I'd never done that. And so how to handle that, keeping in mind the repetitive nature of this big area in the middle mm -hmm. of the sunflower, turning it into little curls and doing that, that was really rewarding. And then when I added the color at the end, I I really liked it. I was very proud of that. I still am. Hmm. Um, there's one with a bunch of cans, old labels. Uh, that was super fun to do. It was okay. fun doing the research. It was fun playing in Photoshop and manipulating the labels to the cans so that I would have the right perspective because I didn't oh. trust myself not to. And then... Like swear swapping out. And those are real cans. You didn't just like come up with ideas for can labels. You no, they're real it? labels. Really? Yeah, Mus Mussolini spaghetti sauce or something. I'm like, <laughs> serious? <laughs> Gee, I wonder why, well, that's that's why. one's out of. Business. I was. I thought it was tongue in cheek. I was like, I oh, know. okay. Oh no, that was a thing. 
Wow. Yeah, that was a thing. So you just go and Google this stuff and find uh, it? No, a, a dear friend of mine pointed me to a site where all these labels were. And wow. And said, have at it. That's uh, and I was like, oh my gosh! I was like a kid in a candy store. It was really cool. <laughs> like, ooh, this one is so weird. Ooh, this is so weird. I have to do this. I have to, I do have to that. jam all these in. It put was them in together. so much fun. It was the most fun was putting it together, and then the detail. There was a lot of detail. Yeah, in it, yeah, yeah. And that was still fun, though. I mean, yeah. I was still enjoying that. Right, right. And then coloring it. I that was just fun. Huh? Cans. And I think I called it canned in the USA and didn't really pay attention to the fact that it wasn't all canned in the USA. Yeah. It, yeah. So I, it was a little misnamed. Again, somebody's going to pick it up and say, oh, that's a social commentary. Yeah, no. That's fine. Yeah, Just it's let fine. people interpret yeah, it their own ways. Yeah, but the Mussolini thing, yeah, what am I saying there? Right. I'm saying nothing. I, I am saying nothing. Don't even <laughs> waste your brain. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do not waste your brain cells <laughs> reading into this. Uh, unless that gives you pleasure. Yeah. If you enjoy reading into it, but make sure you read... To the left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Read to the left. So yeah, so you've put a lot of your stuff online now, and it's yeah. and we've talked a lot about create stuff. You want to be able to share it with people, and it is kind of interesting because right, the traditional model, especially with illustrations, was you drew it and you either had to have a show or you had to have opportunities for people to kind of yeah. put your art in their house. That's yeah. all changed now. Yes. Yeah, so right? Well, I still would like it if people wanted to put my art in their house. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is to me. I'm on all these sites now. Right. And I, and I sell things that I work so hard on. When I'm drawing them, I'm not thinking T-shirt, iPhone case. Yeah, yeah Oh, yeah. wow. This would be an awesome umbrella. I'm, I'm drawing a world. Yep. A world of cans, a world of sunflower, a right. world of chairs floating in the Salton Sea. I'm, I'm in that world while I'm drawing it. I'm not picturing products. So after I'm all done... Well, then you wouldn't be an artist. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be a sellout. I'd write, That's okay. Exactly. So after I'm all done, then I have to somehow make these things work on the products because not that many people seem to be buying art for their walls. But a lot of people are buying T-shirts and iPhone yeah. cases and some rugs. Right. I, I have shower put curtains, my stuff right? on shower curtains. Yeah. That's right. You too can wrap yourself up in a comforter with a sunflower. I, I would think, think the you sunflower would, would be I think popular. You would almost have to wake up happy that way. Yeah, you Don't would. You, you yeah. would. You would. And I would think that the sunflower would be pretty popular because that seems to be kind of a. I went through a tapestry thing. That yeah. For like. A month and a half, two months, people were buying that sunflower tapestry. That's it awesome. was so exciting. Every day I looked, and this was on Society6, and every day I looked, I sold another one. I'm like, That's I awesome. am so happy. That's awesome. It's, they were tapestries. So that means people were hanging these on their wall. That is the highest. That just that made me so happy. Made me feel so good about myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, awesome. Wait, this is what I did. They want they want it in their house. So your stuff is on Society Six. Go ahead, since we're talking about that, go ahead and make a plug for the it's on listing. Society Six under Meg Stock because I oops named myself that while I was yeah. following someone else that right. way I didn't plan on dying right. with that name. But, but I, I think I also if they look you up by your name, I think that comes up. Does I think it? I've gone I haven't on tried. and searched by your full name. Yeah, I haven't tried. I think so. I think you it'll might. work that you way. You can Google me and stuff will come It'll up. come up, yeah. Uh, Redbubble is Meg's Whimsy. Okay. I think I'm on the case, although I never did even, I can't even find myself on there. I don't even so, know that site. Okay. Yeah, it's iPhone cases, but I can't even find oh, myself, okay. so they they just... I guess did not care about me and they it really you are in the hands of the people that run those sites yeah right. they're either going to put you on the front page and yep. you're going to sell stuff or you are going to be buried so far your mama and, can't find you and you've you. got to promote the heck out of yourself you yeah, yeah and I'm not good at that is not my strong I, I don't know firsthand but I think a lot of those sites are kind of self-fulfilling whereas if you start to sell if oh, you yeah, start totally. to sell stuff they notice well they'll and they notice. say well that's selling let me put it on the front page so yeah. we can sell more yeah totally. so then you get to a certain that's point how and the tapestry spirals. kept going until yeah. it ran its course it was like a fad like a hula hoop and it it's done so yeah, yeah, yeah. it can make a comeback right somebody might want to buy sunflower tapestries right but that's exactly what it was right it, it sold a couple for whatever reason, and that got the attention, so it got to the front pages, and then it just snowballed on itself, and it yeah. kept selling. It's super awesome. But when you drop off, when you fall out of favor, or you know it's March and no one's buying anything, right? then 
I, I, I you just sink, slink, slink to the back yeah. pages and yeah. are never heard from. But again. I think everything online is like that, right? So the oh, podcasts sure. are the same way with iTunes. Oh, sure. People putting videos on YouTube the same way. Like, you know, they're going to recommend stuff that people are also watching. It, there is kind of that. Yeah. I don't want to say the deck is stacked against you, but there's definitely that kind of yeah, thing so that's yeah. there. Yeah. So. I don't know how people do it. I see some of the things that are on some of the front pages, and I think. Really? Uh, Did you just buy like that for like all the softball teams in your county? Or right. I mean, why is that? And I do think that if you can afford it, you could do that. You yeah. could buy up a bunch of your stuff, and then that'll get to the front page so you sell it. But that kind of defeats the purpose because you just spent a whole lot of money to get it out on there. your own sh right. shirt, or right. or you have to build something whatever. with a built-in audience. I mean that's the other well, thing. Well, that's right? true too. So you and, uh, and you, you could build cater something to yeah yeah. And I get that lecture audience. from um, yeah. my kids actually. If, well, if you want to sell, then you should do what people want to buy. Well, I don't want to do what people want to buy. Right. I want to do what I want to do. So yeah. I need to, I guess, find my audience. There you go. Well, and it, the funny thing too is online, it doesn't have to be massive anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It used to be that with books or music or anything else, you had to have this critical mass to kind of go anywhere. And I don't think that is necessarily the case anymore. But you and I both have the luxury of not it, the money from this stuff is nice to have, but it's not necessary. No, right? it's not. I do have a day job. Money's nice. Don't get me wrong. Well, the money would be useful because my daughter's going back to school. Oh, there you year. go. I yeah. could use some money. So another, again, right, hint, hint. There I you could go. use a run on sunflower <laughs> tapestries. There you go. Also, I think the cans make for a lovely tapestry to hang in the kitchen. I could see the cans possibly being a neat shower curtain. I actually think the pie would be a good shower curtain. Uh, yeah. See? Yeah. I, just my opinion. Yeah. And the pie um, would be a good dish towel, too. Oh, that's true. They have towels. They have dish towels? Well, I guess they're not dish towels. They're, they're yeah, either towels way. and stuff. Either way. Don't you want to wrap yourself up after a shower? In an American I would do pie. a big print of the pie and yeah. hang it up in my kitchen, there especially you if you've got the whole Americana thing going on in your house. Yeah, if you're, if you're into totally. the Americana. That's why I'm not an interior decorator, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would just go overboard with it. So what are you working on now? Um, I started playing with honey watercolors, and I am, I'm still in a, a processing learning curve on this. Okay. <clears throat> because if I – the honey watercolors are a little thicker and brighter, and they're, they're really – awesome and fun to work with and mm -hmm. they don't dry out super quick but if you do your pen and ink and then color over it you do lose some of the the ink lines but if you do the honey watercolor first and then try and go over with pen and ink right it tends to clog the pen because hmm. it is a little tacky yep. still yeah so i'm sort of trying to figure it out but i did a hot air balloon that i actually just put up um with a pattern on it like a fabric pattern mm -hmm. and i have some dress dummies that i'll probably be finishing and posting soon okay and then i did some what feels to me like a cop out it's like a pop art version of teacup stacked okay but there's like no pen and ink in it it's hmm. just more shape and color okay. and so i feel like i'm copping out but i actually was having fun doing this right. sort of pop art thing so whatever, and then then I have a couple of ideas. I need to get back to the detail, and yeah, I need to get back into that. Got I it. miss it. And I'm just playing around. Ideas thing around. Well, holidays, you have some time off to be able to do a little bit of that. I should have some time off, and I won't be happening to do Christmas shopping and wrapping because Christmas will be over. That's true. So I can get started. And there then there go. are snow days. Snow days are well, awesome. That's true. For snow drawing. days are the best. Yes, love them. That's true. Not so much with a five-year-old that's running around the house. No. But yeah, I can see. For you, it's probably great. It's awesome for me. It's awesome for you. I don't have any five-year-olds <laughs> in the house. I'm actually like, okay, can I just, can I go in? Can I get to work today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's, who's staying home with him while I go in? No, it's, well, there is that. Yeah. There is that. So how do you define creative success? See, the hard questions are last. Yeah, no, I think it's different for everybody, though. Some people's success might be being rich and famous and being a household name. And it, it also might depend on what your medium is. Some people's success is just being happy with what you do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a little hard to work in a vacuum. You, you kind of, you can be happy with what you've created and feel proud. But if you don't have anyone to show it to, to say, you know, look, mommy, look what I did. Look what I did. Then it, it's sort of, that gets old real fast. Like yep. you're still happy with it, but okay, well. 
why did I do that again? Yeah, because everybody well, creates. Because I enjoyed the process and right. I enjoyed the end result. But it's so much more rewarding if you have peers that say, oh, cool, great concept, great execution, you right. did awesome. And it's extra special if it comes from your peers, other people in the same field. Like I'm right. sure when you're writing, if another writer says, whoa, this is awesome, right. great concept, beautifully right. done, it kind of means more to you than if... My cousin who finished eighth grade yeah, says, yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this isn't horrible. Right. Yeah. It's, it would be nice to hear that it's from somebody else that does the same thing. Yeah. Like, whoa, because yeah. that kind of, it makes you feel proud. It, it's affirmational. Yeah, I and, I, and I hear that from, no, I hear that from everybody that I've talked to, right? Because ultimately you're creating things to share with other people. To your point, nobody creates things in a vacuum. And I've heard people yeah. say that time and time again, no matter what they do. But we should be able to do it just for ourselves, just Absolutely. for the sheer joy of doing yes. it. Yes, but I think there's a difference but between... we're shallow and we're mortal. Yes, <laughs> yes, and we're egotistical <laughs> we're and human. we need money. Yeah, yeah. we need we money. Need money. Yeah. No, but, but I mean... But I, we're, we're insecure yes. little balls of messiness yes. and, and yes. we need we need hugs. Yes, and, and I, I, a yeah. friend of mine that I interviewed said, you know, he for him, the most enjoyable moment is that moment when he's creating and he kind of loses sense of yeah. time and place yeah. and everything when you're in the zone, right? Yes. But then at the same time, when it's said and done, he wants other people to see it. Yeah, look what I did while I it. was there. Yeah, exactly. I was in the zone and here's what I brought back. And don't you love it? Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. And don't say, what is that? Right. Don't, don't go there. <laughs> Well, what do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> What's your answer for that? <laughs> People say you your middle finger. That's exactly right. Meg's holding up a middle finger. Yeah. There you go. No, 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 I no, 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 get it. No. Never do that. <laughs> There's no video. <laughs> this is audio. You can't it's, prove it. You can't prove it. Right. You know, am I lying? <laughs> Who knows? That's exactly it. Um, so what advice would you give to other people who are developing their creativity? I'm not sure I'm even in a place to, to give advice to anyone. I <laughs> honestly... You don't think? Well, no, because I'm not. I'm not. Come on, you're a mom. You gotta give some. You've had to give some. Love advice your, in your children life. unconditionally. Oh, listen to this. Support roll right them in. I totally mean that. <laughs> Support them in in their dreams. Buy them toys. <laughs> no, no, no. We talked about not that necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> um, support them in their dreams, whatever they may be, and I I mean that completely seriously. My parents were supportive of me. Yep. I hope I am supportive of my children. I, I certainly love them dearly. Um, but in terms of what advice would I give? Well, my my one son wanted to be a painter. I said no, because then you're going to be a barista. Don't okay. Be a, you don't, that's not a good idea. Ooh, so okay. you can paint. And that comes from an artist. That's hardcore. Yeah, no, paint. By all means, I'm working for a but mutual don't. fund company <laughs> laying out brochures <laughs> all day. Uh, Am I illustrating children's books? No. I think not. If I were, I would be on the street with a cardboard plaque. Need, you know, need money for watercolor. So, yeah. no, I mean, some people do make it, but the people that make it without an, another backup job right. are kind of few and far between. Yep. So have a skill set that gives you a day job. Mm -hmm. And if you can do something that's kind of close, like I'm designing right. during the day, that's awesome. At least I'm in a creative environment. Right. And I'm working around writers and other designers, and lots of us have hobbies. Yeah. You know, photography and painting and things that we do on the weekends right. that have nothing to do with the company we work for. Right. So, you know, you surround yourself with that right. that kind of yep. creative people. That that would I guess that would be advice. Surround yourself with creative people. If you want to be in acting, surround yourself with other people that want to be in acting or stand up or singing or right. something right. performance Support, related. supportive environment. Yeah. yeah. And that was what was hard for me when I was starting out writing, right? Growing up in Virginia, I was the only writer I knew, and I was surrounded by creative people, but a lot of them were musicians and actors mm -hmm. and doing comedy and stuff. Um, and it was really hard for me because I felt like I was writing this stuff in a vacuum. And it shouldn't have been, but it really was. No, but it, it is. It's you know? nice to have people to bounce things off of. Yeah. 
And as a matter of fact, the, this whole honey watercolor thing I got from a coworker right. saying, oh, have you seen this? And I'm like, no. So manic buying binge, yeah. I'll buy it. And yeah, sure. It. And I did, and I love it. That's awesome. So, yeah, that, that wasn't really very good advice, was it? No, I think it is. I think it is. And I get what you're saying about kind of the idea of painting versus being a painter. I think it's easy, going back to that initial statement, I think it's easy for people to especially young people, to want to define themselves in that role, right? It's like, I want to be a quote-unquote writer versus I write. Yeah. Right. So, okay, you want to be a writer. Where are you going to do that other than your bedroom? So and is find that going to pay way, the bills? Yeah, find yeah. a way that you can be independent and mm -hmm. make a living at it. Mm-hmm. But if you want to be a novelist, if you want to write a screenplays and you want to right. write that great book, you should do it. Yeah. You should absolutely do it. But don't be doing it from a back alley where you're starving to death. I agree. So there's freedom, actually, in having the money to support yourself. Yes. I actually think that provides you benefits in a sense that you can truly be more creative and risky yeah. than if you're kind of rolling the dice because and trying to make to money give, off of that. You don't have to cater to what the, right. the masses want. Yeah. We, yeah. We've seen what happens when the masses are in charge. Right. right. So <laughs> you don't have to cater to that. You can yeah. you can do what you love, follow your passion right. because right. you got a day job. It's fine. And even the people that make their living writing or playing music or everything else a lot of times the most fulfilling stuff for them is the stuff they do outside of what yeah. they're getting paid for even among the professionals this might not be what my fan base wants but this right. is what i want to do now right. so i've made right. enough money this month now i can play or now the sitcom writer who's been writing for the same sitcom for seven years tired yeah. of the characters but they're doing movies on the side yeah. and other types of stuff totally get it yeah no i actually think that's good advice oh so, lucky. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we work here. That's fine. It's all good. So my last question, I guess we talked a little bit about Society6. How do people reach you or actually see some of your art if they want to check it out and are interested in the sunflower or the pie or the cans or any of those oh, pieces? Oh, those beautiful pieces. Beautiful pieces. Yes. All of those sites. There you go. Now, if you Google Meg Shearer, I actually come up. Another Meg Shearer comes up, too, who does different things. But if you do Meg Shearer illustration, mm -hmm. Fine Art America stuff will come up. Society, Society Six, 6 will come up. Yep. Society Six still sells stuff through Amazon. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. been trying Which to search Which that's for actually Amazon scary yet. because I you click on it and sometimes it goes to Society Six, sometimes it goes to a site in China. Huh. That is not you, and people oh, are wow. selling your stuff. Interesting. Yeah. I don't and know not, what that's about. And you're not getting anything for you're it. You're not getting kickbacks no. from it. No, you're not. Hmm. So, but Amazon has links to Society Six. So, but mostly if you just Google "make sure illustration," it It'll stuff come comes up. up. Got it. Okay, it's pretty easy to find, and I think it's on your site. It is at least one of them's on. Well, your, site. your stuff's linked up. Yeah, the Society Six page is linked through so, the site yeah, for the so podcast. You can go to yes. Alan's site to the web to you the can podcast go website. To this it's there. Podcast site. Yes, and see find other it there. podcasts and also my link. There you go. There you nope, go. that works. Great. And we brought it full circle. We're already back. There we go. <laughs> so thanks for doing this. I appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. Good conversation. Really enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. All right. So uh, there you have it. Uh, thanks so much for doing that, Meg. I appreciate it. And absolutely learned something myself that you, yes, you do, in fact, have mistakes in art. I, it reframes the way that I uh, have conversations with my son now around his drawings, and, and I really appreciate that insight. Hopefully you folks found it enjoyable as well. As Meg mentioned, you can find her on Twitter at Meg's Art Tweet. Say hello, uh, tell her that you liked the logo, and um, check her out on Society6. There's a link to that in the uh, data for the podcast in this file and also on the web page. You can find a link to her Society6 stuff on the site as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and thanks for listening.